Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to FHC Investments Fireside Chat webinar series. Today, we'll be talking about a holistic approach to wealth planning. As is customary with FHC, we start everything with a quick prayer. Almighty God, we welcome you as the head of these proceedings. We are reminded that you care about every single aspect of our lives, and it is your desire for us to be intentional with everything. You want us to increase in wisdom, you want us to increase in wealth, and it is your desire for us to be good stewards of what you have freely given us. We pray that today is informative, inspirational, and will ignite a fire within all tuning in to begin or continue along this journey of wealth, wellness. All these things we pray through your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, I am Dr. Sarah Lawrence Lewis, proud brand ambassador of FHC Investments Limited, and I'll be your host today and all throughout this webinar series. If you're like me, a millennial woman, a wife, a mother, a doctor, a business owner, then you must have wondered at some point, how can you make the most of the money you're making now? So it can benefit me and my children in the future whether it's for school or pursuing other dreams. Also, it's never too late to start thinking about retirement and ensuring it's enough to sustain the lifestyle that you want. I hope we have all started to at least think about this, but if you haven't, there's no better time than the present. So today, I'm joined by three phenomenal ladies to discuss the holistic approach to wealth planning. Joining me this evening is Ms. Roxanne Linton, CEO of First Heritage Cooperative Credit Union, and Mrs. Carleen Mullins, General Manager of FHC Investments, a wholly owned subsidiary of FHC Credit Union. Later, we'll be joined by my friend, Mrs. Sanya Goff, President of the Pension Industry Association of Jamaica. She's also an attorney at law and partner in the law firm Hart Muirhead Fatal. Okay, before we go into what I know will be a very insightful discussion, allow me to welcome Roxanne Linton, CEO of FHC Credit Union, to bring us some greetings. Thank you, Sarah. It's really a pleasure to be here and happy to have you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, welcome to this, our uh, webinar series. I do want to specially acknowledge all our members who are joining and also my FHC colleagues who are also joining. And for persons who aren't yet a part of the FHC family, I do also welcome you warmly. And I know by the end of this webinar, you will be a part of the FHC family. You'll be joining our cohort here at FHC. So what do we have going on today? We have um, the first installment in a three-part webinar series, a fireside chat with. It's, it's um, been brought to you by FHC Investments Limited, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of the FHC Credit Union. And this webinar series is very important to us at FHC because it allows us another opportunity to express who we are at FHC. We are a credit union and uh, a, a, a group of companies that you know, really drive financial enablement for our members. We want the best for our members as they grow financially. And one of the key prongs with that is education, financial education. And so Sarah, that's why we're here today um, to do this kind of um, intervention for persons to learn more um, about finances, and in particular, uh, today we're going to be talking about investments from a holistic approach, and one key part of investing is also investing for your future, for retirement, and so a lot of discussions will also occur on, on that front. And so, you know, um, FHC, the credit union, and the investment company provides the opportunity for holistic planning, whether you're starting out um, you know, with your savings and deposits accounts with, with the credit union and building that wealth and transitioning to more sophisticated offerings, um, we are here to support you. 
And you know, persons on the call, uh, you know, you may already be an investor. Um, there's still something here for you. You learn how to maximize um, the opportunities and to build and grow with what you have. And for persons who are new and wanting to become an investor, you know, we are able and we're willing and ready to, to get you there. So, you know, I, I, I'm just really excited. It's going to be a lovely um, one hour session with us. And um, at the end of the day, I want you to take the action and, you know, give us a call and become a part of the FAT family and become even a more expansive investor. This is um, first installment in a three part series, as I said. So listen, join um, and look out. You know, watch out for the, the notification um, for the other webinars and do be a part of it. So thank you and enjoy. Ah, that sounds fantastic. So we're going to get into the meat of the matter, right? And we're going to have with us, as I said before, Mrs. Carleen Mullins. And I am very excited myself to learn some of the practical steps toward active wealth planning. So let me ask you, Ms. Linton, first. Why is wealth planning important? Well, you know, if you fail to plan, what do they say? <laughs> you plan to plan fail. Plan to fail. And so um, for all of us, I think a key part of our lives is our finances. And as such, it's important for us to have plans in place to be able to chart that future that we want um, from a financial perspective. And why is it important for FHC as a credit union to chart this mandate? Well, um, FHC, uh, as a credit union, uh, one of our distinctions um, is that we care about our members. We are a member-focused organization, and as such, we want our members to express themselves um, in the best possible way financially. Mm -hmm. And so it's important for us to provide the education and also through our suite of um, products and services and our team, our expert um, caring, friendly team be able to put all that together to support in that journey um, financially. Okay, so unfortunately many of us weren't taught this at school. We, I don't really know the outlet to learn the nitty-gritties of what it takes to put together a holistic wealth creation plan. Could you tell us some of the steps to that? Okay, so I mean uh, for all the persons who are online now, that's a key first step. Yes. You know, seeking out information, seeking out knowledge in order, in order to grow. And then partnering with a, a qualified expert um, financial advisor mm -hmm. um, is, is a next step. Um, what, what we do at FHC that makes it holistic is that we focus on the individual. Mm -hmm. So any plan that is developed um, by FHC is tailored for that individual. So wealth is expressed in different ways, as you know, Sarah. Yes. Um, for some persons, you know, they may want to um, do uh, further education, um, mm -hmm. and so they need to plan for that. Um, some persons may want a legacy and need to plan and, and reserve for that. There's also retirement planning, as we said earlier. So all the different goals that persons may have, um, you know, those need to be considered, and the conversations need to happen around those goals. Um, to, to, to come up with a plan that works. And so ho for, for us, holistic means centered on that member or client. Okay. Here. <laughs> Mrs. Mullins, I want you to break it down. Make it simple because I'm sure a lot of our viewers think that wealth acquisition is truly unattainable. Mm -hmm. I want you to share with us a little bit why investing is important and how does one become an investor? Okay, sure, Sarah. So, you know, typically most of us go through four major financial life phases. Following from what Ms. Linton said earlier, we are accustomed to the first stage, which is getting started. We, we know it as um, starting out in life, right? Mm -hmm. And what that is, is when we initially leave school or we get our first job, and then we move on to the next phase which is building. We're now building our families, acquiring our assets, as well as you know, um, progressing in our careers. Then we will move on to pre-retirement, and that's when we now need to downsize, reduce our debts, and 
prepare for that retirement phase, which is ultimately um, the final phase. So as we go through those stages, irrespective of what stage you are, it is important that we have a good balance of financial products to support us. Investing, saving is, is, is important, and that's what we always start out with. We are accustomed to starting out with a savings account, a share account at FHC. But you now need to take on investing because investing is what is going to allow your money to increase in value. Mm -hmm. So that's what investing essentially does. It will, it, you will benefit from the, the power of compounding and the compounding effect is very powerful. You will also be able to um, earn great returns, you know, returns that will help you to fight against inflation, for example. So we all experience inflation as we go to the supermarket week over week. We know that the value of our money is not worth the same. You know, the, the, uh, the value of money today is definitely worth um, le more than, le yeah. than tomorrow or the next week. So as you invest, then you'll be able to accumulate and earn higher returns to be able to sustain those economic forces that you face. And no, it doesn't take a huge sum to start investing. That is a myth because depending on the investment options, and there are various, which I'm sure we'll get into later, mm -hmm. um, depending on the investment options, you know, you have different stages that you can start. So don't wait to accumulate that huge amount or you'll never get started. Mm -hmm. That's true. true. That's true. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to talk a little bit more about investments after, but I have to throw to Miss Linton because I know some people must be wondering, it's quite unusual for a credit union to be talking to its members about investing. But FAT is unique, being the only credit union with a standalone investment company. How can credit union members and prospective members, of course, maximize on this opportunity? Right. So, Sarah, uh, what you just expressed uh, goes to the core of who we are at FAT. You know, wanting our members to have a full service uh, offering um, as it relates to financial um, well-being. And so we start with our products that occur at the credit union um, level or savings or deposits. Um, we have an insurance product, an FIP, that supports persons in, in, um, with their financial um, expenses um, re relating to, to final expenses. And then um, from there, persons are able to build and, and move towards investment type activities. Um, so the need for us to be able to support um, our members at really at any stage, at any stage in their financial journey is one key motivation um, for us um, to have this, this, this subsidiary. It's truly remarkable. Yes. Okay. yes. So Mrs. M oh, you're going to say something and so else. I, yeah. I think, you know, for persons on the call who have not yet um, taken advantage and considered how you move um, to the, the, the stage now of doing investing, now is the time to take action. So you can maximize the knowledge that you're gaining today by taking action, taking that first step, making that call. Um, and starting the discussion. Absolutely. Because as Mrs. Mullins said, mm -hmm. people think that you have to have this massive amount of money or be this type of person to be investing. And really, there's something there for everyone. Absolutely, right? there's something there for everyone. So Mrs. Mullins, what are your recommendations to persons who are watching, especially the young professionals and the millennials, on how to go about investing and which investment products to choose? Well, you know, Sarah, I always tell persons, it starts with the mindset. Mm. It requires a commitment and the discipline. I think it was Warren Buffett who said, you don't need to be smarter than the rest, you just need to be more disciplined than the rest. And so you need to make that commitment. And I know it's difficult. That's probably the most difficult step because we're all faced with situations. We don't um, have unlimited income. And of course, we have competing expenses. Persons have their obligations. And some of those can be put off. But I think once you make that decision, and you now start to exercise the discipline, then that takes a big part out of, you know, how do I go about investing? 
the, the truth is we'll never earn enough to satisfy us. So if we, if we could earn more tomorrow, we're always going to want to earn more. So why put it off? Why not make that decision now? And so the, the, once you make that decision, then I would recommend that you, know, you speak with a licensed financial advisor or investment team at FHC Investments. We have a licensed set of investment advisors who are willing to sit with you and tailor that plan, as we said earlier. So different options will be suitable for different um, individuals. However, on a more general note, um, stocks are usually a good way to start investing. And the reason for that is the initial capital or the startup required is usually very marginal. In fact, you can buy one unit of stock that trades on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. And that one unit of stock could translate into $1 or less. So you see, you don't need a lot to start investing. Then, of course, as you move along um, throughout the, the different phases of your life cycle, then we could look at bonds. And bonds really are just investment products issued by either governments or corporate entities. So as these institutions want to raise funds, they will issue a bond. And you, the investor, can participate in that bond and, of course, earn interest throughout the life of that bond. And then, last but not least, we always recommend that you start a retirement account or a pension account because that investment is really designed specifically to give you income when you get to retirement. But whatever the mix, the key message here is just make that commitment and start now. Yes. Good. All right. So we're going to throw to some questions from our viewers. But before we get there, because trust me, ladies, when I put up that we're going to have this fireside webinar today, my DM was filled with questions about stocks. So I don't want to blow over it. <laughs> I want us to don't take it for granted that people know because people hear about these IPOs and hear about these stocks and they don't even know the avenue to get to it. And which ones do you choose? Is it a gamble? You know, just walk us through the process of choosing what to buy into, tapering expectations, because I know some people give an offering and then they only get a half or a quarter. You know, okay. they just don't understand. And I would love for them to have a clearer understanding. Of course, they'll get a pristine picture when they speak with our investors. Right. However, they want a little bit more information on how they can break into the stock market and what's the methodology behind it. Right, Sarah. So you are correct. The, the, the first thing to do is to establish an account with a stockbroker. FHC Investments, of course, your <laughs> stockbroker. So once you have established that account, typically we would give you recommendations based on, of course, your goals, the timeline that you're looking to invest for, um, your risk appetite as well, because although stocks are considered risky investments, some stocks are considered less risky than others. So you would look at what we call blue chip companies, for example. And I won't promote any of those yeah. today. <laughs> but there are blue chip stocks that, of course, you know, gives you good value. They will pay dividends. And dividends are really just a, a portion of their profits that they pay out to the investors. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the value of that stock will tend to appreciate um, over time. So again, you're earning just from the appreciation in the value of your investment. So how you get in is really establishing a broker account first and foremost, and then we can now look at the different recommendations. And as the initial public offerings, the IPOs come out, we also make the recommendations because not all initial public offerings are, va or, are what I should say, um, valuable investments. You know, it, it depends on the value that they're selling that stock for. So you want to ensure that you're buying something that is of value, you know. Yes. Okay. And is it that once some of the foundation stocks that were out from a long time ago, can you still break into those markets or is only the newer ones as they are released that as a we go through the brokers we have access to. 
Right. So those that would have been listed on the market already, we call that the secondary market. Mm -hmm. And so once you establish your broker account, you can now give your orders, which what you want to buy. And then, of course, your stock broker, FHC Investments, will <laughs> fill those orders for you and get those stocks into your portfolio. So over time, you can purchase whatever all the, comp all the companies that are listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange now, you can purchase that on any given day once the market is open for trading. Okay, awesome, awesome. Okay, so I'm going to take it to a question from one of our viewers. And it's a practical one. I think Ms. Mullings, Mrs. Mullings, you may take this one again. How do I get started if, would, if I would like to open an investment account with FHC Investments? Okay, certainly. <laughs> so, so we'd love to have you. And um, to what you, essentially you need a national identification, a tax registration number, and a proof of address in the form of a bank statement, um, as well as um, a utility bill. And then if, if you, when you come in, we will ask you to name two references. So you will give us the name and contact number for those references. One, that process takes 24 to 48 hours maximum. Once the account is set up, we set it up with FHC Investments, and then we set up your account with the stock exchange as well, because you will need a depository account to hold those stocks. The stocks are held in electronic format, and so we open both accounts for you at the same time. Okay. Ms. Linton, you spoke to us a little bit about having a holistic wealth creation plan. And it seems, it can seem lofty, because, you know, for those who don't truly understand it, I want you, to, and you did give us the aspects of it, you know, having some investments, having a pension plan. Does it look the same throughout the life of someone, or this is something that you revisit with your investors? You know, I just want people to get a practical outlook on what this whole wealth management journey looks like. Right, that's a great question, um, Sarah. So any financial plan that exists and, you know, the holistic wealth planning um, tool is something that has to be revisited. It's not a one-time event. Mm -hmm. And so it's a continuous tuning of that plan because your life changes, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you're going to have different goals at different stages of your life. And so that's why it's important to establish that relationship with a trusted um, financial advisor so they can, can um, be with you along that journey. So definitely not um, a static um, plan. It's one that's dynamic and, and changes as you change. And so you have to also make sure that... Um, you know, you, you look at having those conversations with your advisor to update whenever there's a major life, life event. Right. You know, you are having that conversation to, to make the changes. And you may have different goals. Your goals may change, you know, so that needs to be updated also. Okay. Mrs. Mullins, yes, you mentioned dividends. And this is just a question for me. I'm sure somebody else must want to know too. You said it's return on your investment. Is it advised always to take your pay dividend payments or reinvest and just continue that and let it snowball? This is me getting my free advice here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, of course, it will depend on what your goals are. Naturally, we would want you to reinvest because the more you're um, putting back is the more you're likely to get. Um, so we normally recommend that you reinvest those dividends and you can reinvest those dividends in any other instrument. It's not a matter where you have to, so let's say you got dividends from Grace Kennedy shares, owning Grace Kennedy shares. You don't have to reinvest those dividends back in Grace Kennedy shares. You could use those dividends to put in your earner plus account at, at the credit union, or you could use those dividends to buy another stock that is listed on the market. But we normally recommend, you know, if, you, if there's no need for your for cash flow, from the dividend payments, then yes, you reinvest them. Okay, and before we close out this segment, I wanna hear more about bonds. I wanna know mm -hmm. how they come about, how do I qualify? You know, I, it sounds amazing, but I don't yes. know, they're always missing me. I, I want to know more about them. Mm -hmm. Right, so Sarah, there, the truth is there is a wide suite of bonds. 
a huge, I mean, there are bonds that are issued by so many entities, so many government um, as well as corporate entities. The key thing is having that relationship. And by the way, FHC investments give you that personalized relationship. So we will send these recommendations to you. Um, being so close to the market, it means that we have the first hand information. And then of course we will share it with you based on your goals, your profile, your risk profile, etc. We will now shoot some of those bond options to you. What the bonds do, is they're called fixed income instruments. And the reason for that is because they provide a steady stream of income. So it's a good um, secondary source of income for you. Once you purchase a bond, the bond will pay interest throughout the lifetime of the bond. And then usually at maturity, you will get back your principal. So again, you have that compounding effect because the interest that you're earning, you can reinvest it and then of course earn on that interest. So we would have to look at you, the individual, to be able to send you that um, selection of bonds that we think is suitable for you. All right, before we go into some take home points, Ms. Linton, talk to the person out there who's like me, no, sir, I'm not going to invest my money. I'd rather put it under my mattress. <clears throat> Me. <laughs> I am not risky. My sister would buy all the bonds. and the, Well, bonds are a little bit more secure than stocks. And so I, I like to just, this, this is it. This is what I have. But there's so much more ways to make your money work for you. And I That's want amazing. people to break out of that very narrow way of thinking. Me. Speak to the me's out there <laughs> on this call who, you know, they have the money in the bank, they are earning money, and you want, we all want them, FHC wants that money to work for them. Right, right, absolutely, um, Sarah. And so one of the key things to remember is that as unique as you are, we have plans that are designed to um, reflect who you are. And so the conservatism that you spoke about um, a while ago and for other um, persons on the call who may consider themselves very conservative, plans can be designed to start out with that conservative approach. And as your mindset and thinking about risk changes, you can evolve and graduate to maybe a, a, a middle ground. Um, right level and, and then I don't see you get into the high risk <laughs> but who knows um, so I, I think one of the key things and, and you expressed it is uh, and, and it's no different in investing being self-aware right. and so that self-awareness helps us to understand what is our current appetite for risk and um, starting there with with their investment advisor saying, listen, this is where I am at. I do want to enter the market because of the growth potential that exists. And, and when you're relatively younger, you mentioned being a millennial, you have the benefit of a longer time horizon mm -hmm. for those investments to work for you. Yes. And so, um, you know, don't feel hindered. Um, I would say to everyone on the call, don't feel hindered because you may think um, that you're conservative. Let's start there. Let's have the conversation and we can start with that conservative plan and then you, you move on. And the truth is it really doesn't serve you to think that way because as Mrs. Mulling said, the money today is not the money tomorrow exactly. and it will not be the money next exactly. year. So you need to be three, four, five, ten steps ahead yeah. making sure that that money is evolving as cost of living evolves and everything Absolutely. else evolves. Making your money work for you. Oh yes. yes. <laughs> so I want to uh, encourage everyone out there to keep the questions coming. We may not get to address it here, but we have a full team out there that's answering everything in the chat. So just keep the questions coming and we, our team will be here to address each and everything. So ladies, this was such an informative segment. The takeaways I got, and you guys can add anything, if anything, to establish an investment account to supplement your daily living as well as a pension when you get to retirement age. We soon get to that point, because I heard it and I said, this is important. Mm -hmm. The key is you can start small with your investment and then build as you grow. And I love that you said stocks is an easy, accessible option for new um, investors. Yes. So we're gonna continue this discussion. I want everyone to stay tuned for a follow-up discussion on preparing for retirement and establishing a pension plan. We'll be right back. 
Did you know that you can purchase one unit of stock on the Jamaica Stock Exchange and that there are stocks valued at less than $1? Yes, so technically you can invest $1 in stocks. Find out how you can take advantage of this. WhatsApp invest to 876-564-9485 to connect with an investment advisor. FHC Investments, caring for you and your investments. Back to part two of our fireside chat. And we are now joined with Mrs. Sanya Goff, who badly up and said I have to call her Sanya. She is the president of the Pension Industri Industry Association of Jamaica. Welcome, Sanya. Thank you. No, I'm really excited to talk about this. And I know because a lot of us have some planning to do. Now, the Pension Industry Association of Jamaica has been very vocal in lobby lobbying for retirement planning and making sure by the time that we reach to retirement, we have financial freedom. Tell us a little bit more about that movement and why all of us need to be thinking ahead. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, so people are living two to three decades after they stop formal work. So can you imagine you stop work at 60 and you're alive at 90. If you have not adequately saved for retirement and put aside something and something that's meaningful, you can face in a very real way old age poverty. And what that means often is that you have to rely on the goodwill of neighbors, family, friends. There's a lot of pressure on children to look after you. It creates this intergenerational dependence. Um, sometimes it creates intergenerational poverty. And so one of the things we at the PIG are looking at is ways in which we can break that mindset and encourage people to save, not just save for retirement, but save for retirement in a meaningful, sustainable way. And so that's a big part of our mandate. We're doing a lot of work around um, different initiatives, working with the Financial Services Commission as well. We can get into some of those things a little later. But fundamentally, it is to ensure that we focus on reducing old age poverty. Wonderful. So Carlene, based on what Sanya just said, how does FHC investments help persons to adequately plan for retirement? Okay, Sarah, so you know we're all about caring for you and we don't care about you just now. We care for you now and then. So we're caring for you now and we're caring for you right through to your senior years. So earlier I mentioned that a retirement account is critical and I'm pleased to say that FHC, uh, more than uh, probably two decades ago, started our own retirement account. It's called the Pension Goals, the FHC Retirement Scheme. And what this does is it enables you to start putting away funds from today to help you when you get to retirement. As Sanya rightly said, we need to live beyond those years. What we have made this account um, very accessible. So once you turn 18 years old, you can now start this um, retirement account right through to age 59. So don't worry viewers, if you have passed 18 and you haven't started your retirement account, you can still qualify once you have not yet reached age 59, mm -hmm. right? Then we also um, make it so flexible in that you can contribute to that account at your convenience. So if you are more comfortable in contributing on a weekly basis, fortnightly basis, um, monthly, even annually, but we recommend, of course, consistent contribution because we want you to have a meaningful retirement, as Sanya said um, earlier as well. We also make it very accessible in that it only takes 2,000, 2,000 Jamaican dollars mm. to get your account started. So we encourage persons, once you, you, you walk into FHC, we're talking about a holistic plan. We think about the now, you're investing to, re, to get a return today, but you're also investing towards your retirement through our pension gold account. And of course, this forum is another way that we're demonstrating that we are supporting persons because we're now you know, making you aware and encouraging persons to come on board and start their retirement plan. Sounds good. Sanyo, so how do we get more people to participate in a pension plan? And what is the PIAG doing to support this? 
great question. You know, I love to talk about anything pensions. So I'm just, <laughs> I can talk forever about this. So one of the things um, that we've recognized is that financial literacy is important. So programs like these are vital. But the reality is that we don't see financial literacy in Jamaica um, moving the needle in a sufficiently powerful way. Mm -hmm. So we need to think about changing the choice architecture and changing the choice landscape to put people in a pension plan. In other words, yes, it's important to encourage people to take that first step, but the reality is that after about two decades of a like, formalized private sector pension regime that's regulated, we still have pension coverage hovering between 9 and 11%. Mm -hmm. When you throw in the public sector workers who are a part of the public sector pension scheme, which is not even the majority of public sector workers, that moves up to about 18%. So coverage is very low, and it has been very low for a very long time. And so what we've been looking at at the PIAJ is advancing a proposal for auto-enrollment. Mm -hmm. And what that simply means is, rather than waiting for you, Sarah, to say, okay, I'm going to go and knock on the door of FHC and join the retirement scheme, mm -hmm. if you are employed and your employer does not have a pension arrangement, the employer would be statutorily mandated to enroll you in any of the retirement scheme providers mm -hmm. that are there. The thinking is that it's going to increase competition, it's mm -hmm. going to deepen retirement scheme products in the market, it's going to um, improve choice for, for members, but also it really puts the onus on employers to take that first step for you. You can always opt out if it's not the right time, because mm -hmm. the truth is that Jamaicans will save, you know. Jamaicans are natural savers. If you think about the proliferation of the kind of casual partner schemes that we have, yes. people yes. save, but it's not always a good time to save, and we tend to put it off. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're, not, we're not denying anyone through the proposal the right to opt out of a retirement scheme or to go back in at a later stage, but it's really, like I said, flipping that choice architecture and saying, rather than waiting on you to opt in, mm -hmm. to join the scheme on your own initiative, let it be a requirement of an employer to put you into a scheme if you are not a part of the employer scheme already. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's a big part of it. But that yeah. only focuses on employed workers. Mm -hmm. But as you know, in Jamaica, our labor force is very nuanced, very dynamic. Um, we have different types of workers. So we have public sector, private sector, those who are formally employed. We have self-employed workers. We have independent contractors. And depending on who you speak to, um, contract workers may mean something to one person and quite a different thing to another. We have gig workers, we have low income workers. I mean, it's, it's a very diverse, nuanced type of labor force that we have. Mm -hmm. And so the auto enrollment proposal only kind of focuses on one type of worker. The FSC is working on um, a proposal for micro pensions, which is looking at rather than, as Carlene said, sometimes really it's not about the amount that you're putting in, but just, just being consistent. Mm -hmm. So micro pensions is an approach that says, put in, put, save into a retirement scheme, but save small amounts more often. Mm -hmm. So whereas your typical standard employed worker would probably contribute once a month, maybe you're contributing weekly, a small amount. And you get nudged sometimes by a text message from your phone, or you go to the grocery store and you kind of top up your amount. And, but that requires a a significant technological plumbing to, to support it. So it's a bit of work to get that going. But I wanted to mention it because the FSC is doing work, that's the Financial Services right. Commission, is doing a lot of work in looking at that cohort of work as well. So that would be your low income, um, self-employed workers, mm -hmm. um, informal workers who you know, get text messages on the phone and they can press yes or no to put $500 or $2,000 right. to, right. their, to their account. So that's a, a big part of what we're working on for, for us at the PIAJ is auto enrollment. We think it will be um, a great success. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if we find 100 or 200,000 um, employees, New yes, no, exactly, yeah. that can be, can be meaningful. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we know about the Tourism Workers Pension Scheme, which was a big initiative by the Ministry of Tourism, which has also, um, when it fully gets running, will have a, a significant impact, we hope. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. Carlene, you mentioned that we only need $2,000 to start our account. Correct. What would persons now look to contribute going forward in order to have a comfortable life when they retire? Okay. So the truth is, Sarah, it will depend on a number of factors. One being your age, the number of years you have left to contribute before you get to retirement. 
um, and, and so on. So what we do is we can actually um, work a projection for you. We will sit with you, look at a reasonable amount, you know, that is a manageable amount for you, and then make that projection to tell you where that will take you to when you get to retirement. Because you may have 30 years, another person may have just 10 years. Mm -hmm. So we'll now um, project for you based on your, your consistent contribution, the earnings from those contributions, and of course the number of years, and then let you know, okay, this is the sum that you will get on retirement. Um, experts will tell you that ideally you want to save towards at least 70% mm -hmm. of your income. So whatever you're earning now, ideally you want to put away, accumulate at least 70% of that so that when you get to retirement, you can still live comfortably. Right. So we work with you on an individual basis and provide you with those numbers, you know, and then of course we help you to get on that, you know, plan to make sure you stick to it and to be able to get to your goal. Okay, Sanya, is there a maximum contribution or a cap that someone can do? Because yes. suppose I want to give 90%, I know yes. 20, 20 is what's recommended, <laughs> right. but are there any rules yes. to how you see it? So under the Income Tax Act, you are capped out at 20% in total. Mm. Uh, and so we encourage persons to contribute the maximum, mm -hmm. it's important to understand that what we have is a tax deferred system. So your contributions are, um, are made to a retirement scheme or a pension plan before your income is taxed. Mm -hmm. The returns on those investments, the investments of your contributions, um, those are also tax free. But when you get to retirement, then usually there's a taxable event and you would pay tax at that point. But at the end of the day, if you are contributing before your income is taxed, you're always getting the best opportunity to, ta to maximize your, your investments. investments. And so you are capped out at 20%. And, um, but a lot of people tend to think it's only 5% or you know 5% and then their employer matches 5%. But no, you can go up to 20%. Okay. Sanya, I love this question. We have a question from a viewer who is going to follow up now on our maximum contribution or cap question. And they said, okay, since there's a maximum contribution or a cap, is there, to the amount that you can contribute, is it legal for me to contribute to, example, a pension goal account at FHC Investments and then another pension fund somewhere? Good question. Like what I'm thinking. But. Right. No, <laughs> and, um, we, we, we're asked that often. Right now, you can only be an active contributor to one pension arrangement at a time. The expectation, though, is that the Pensions Act will be amended, and we are anticipating that it will be amended shortly, but we've been waiting for a while, <laughs> but that it will be amended shortly to allow you to contribute to more than one pension arrangement and no limit. So you could contribute to 15 if you wished, right. um, but up to a cap of 20%. The, in each the, individual? Uh, no, no, up to an aggregate cap of 20. Oh. So you could, no, it's not 20 okay. in each account. Okay. That's a very good See? question. <laughs> yeah. That's See, that's I'm, that's I'm that's right that's here with the thing. <laughs> It's 20 in total, um, and okay. you would have to kind of self-declare that you're not, you're not otherwise in excess of the 20%, okay. because the, in, each investment manager is not going to be policing right. what you're contributing somewhere else. Could um, you tell me the benefit, though? So if it's 20, mm -hmm. so um, the gross will be the same, essentially. Mm -hmm. Spreading it across different, um, since you said you're what, lobbying for it, what would be the benefit of... of, of well, people want choices, right? Mm -hmm. So there's, a, there's always a concentration risk if you have everything in one pot. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And some people, it really, I think, will also stimulate greater, like I said, competition when people market. know that, okay, mm -hmm. they're competing for that extra 2% or 5% of somebody's salary. Yes. Uh, the, the downside will be, I think... Uh, the potential of a lot of orphaned or stranded accounts. So that by the time you reach 60, you may have contributed to a number of retirement scheme accounts or you would have had a, worked with a number of persons during your life, entities during your mm -hmm. lifetime, and you may have contributed to those pension plans. And you could end up with 15 accounts mm -hmm. by the time you hit 60, and you may not remember where all of them are. Mm -hmm. And so that's a risk, and it would be important for, for contributors to manage um, where they have their money and ensure that they're mindful and thoughtful about where they're contributing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Kylene, but I think you may have a solution to that one because there may be other investment options to supplement a pension plan. Tell us if right. there's anything additional that persons can think about starting now. 
Yes, so that's correct, Sanya. And the, the truth is, no matter how much, if you contribute the max 20%, that is sometimes not going to be sufficient when you get to retirement. It right. will not be sufficient to sustain you. So we, we always recommend looking at a mix of investment yes. options. The retirement account is really just one avenue, one product that will help you to get there. But we spoke earlier about bonds. Bonds are good um, investment options that can supplement uh, your retirement. So when you get to retirement, you are earning that steady stream of income from the like bonds that you would have invested in. Yeah. Correct. And there are bonds, for example, that are also tax-free or tax-deferred as well. Mm -hmm. So um, there are various options. Uh, the dividends from the stocks can also be used to augment your retirement income. Mm -hmm. So investing in blue chip companies that consistently pay dividends can help you um, at retirement. And of course, there are other, um, what we call collective investment schemes. And what that is, is really just pooled investments. Right. So a fund manager will take your funds and my funds and all of us investment mm -hmm. pool it and buy investment assets. Um, that will give you a wide range of investments that can also generate return for, for you um, throughout your retirement mm -hmm. and those investments could be in real estate So instead of going out and buying a property on your own, you're actually investing in real estate Correct. through a pooled investment mm -hmm. or a collective investment scheme yes. So there are many um, options, options out there to, to supplement your uh, Retirement, but I would just like to follow up um, what Sanya said about we, we encourage persons to contribute the maximum 20% mm -hmm. because whether you know it or not, a portion of that um, income that you're earning is going back into taxes. So if you do the calculation, you will see that if you only contributed that 5% versus contributing, let's say 10%, the additional amount that you're paying out in, when you contribute 10% if you don't pay that 10%, a portion of that would have gone to the, to the government in taxes. Right. Yes. So we always recommend contribute as much as you can up to the maximum 20%. Right. So even if you can't manage the 20%, if you can do 15%, 18%, you know, there's right. no limitation. Right. The limitation is really just a maximum of 20%. And this is true as well for your company funds, your superannuation plans. You are allowed, and I get this question all the time, where employees who contribute to their company's pension plan, as, as Sanya said, they, are to, they think it's 5% and their employer contributes the other 5%. Mm -hmm. But you can actually contribute up to 20%. So speak to your employer if you are a part of a, a, a company plan to see how you can increase those contributions. Okay. And I think also it's important to remember that you're not locked in. So other than the mandatory right. contributions that you may have to make for your employer-sponsored plans, you can change that contribution rate because we recognize that the, your life isn't going to be the same, um, you know, consistently. Things right. will happen. You have children, illness, you laid off from work, whatever, you know, number of life events may occur. You can find yourself in a position where a particular contribution rate is no longer feasible or a particular contribution rate is no more feasible. Right. And so a lot of people get scared and they think, oh, if I start contributing at 8% or 12%, I'm locked in for life, but you're not. Um, and that's a part of the conversation that I think we tend not to focus on, letting people know that there is flexibility in your contribution rates. All right, Cor correct me if I'm wrong, because I really want, I don't want somebody out there have a question and they don't ask. So you could be part of a institution, you're working, you're mm -hmm. contributing to their plan. If you or become redundant or so, is there a payout that's made mm -hmm. of the contribution right. that is, has been made to pension plan? What's the next step? Because I know some people are like, yeah, I got this money and they just start using it. Yeah. I, need, I need us to be wise about those amounts. So, so yes, depending on the, what we call the governing documents, the deed and rules of that particular pension plan, 
that will determine what you're able to get. Um, and it depends on the circumstances under which you've left the plan. Did, were you terminated? Are you leaving because you've retired? Have you gone on early retirement, ill health retirement? But let us say you left the job or you just resigned. Yes, there's usually an option to get a refund of your contributions, usually, depending on what the, the scheme rules um, or the fund rules uh, provide for, your employer contributions um, may have to stay. Sometimes they can be ported to another retirement scheme. But one of the biggest things is that portability is something that you're able to do. You can take those contributions to another so FHC, fund, FHC to another employer, <laughs> etc. And portability is a major feature of any moder modern pension regime so that you don't have to kind of leave your pots of pension behind. You can port them all with you to another, to another plan. But the thing is, the 20-year rule, the 30-year rule is not thinking that way. And we need them to, you know, so open up their eyes. When they get this money in hand, mm -hmm. this 2 million, 1 million, they can just go straight to a different pension plan and put that down? Yes, and we're, we encourage people to do that, that they, um, you know, move their money. I remember when I left my first, listen, as much as I preached this thing yeah, for like almost 20 years, when I left my first job, and I saw what I could get as cash. Yeah. I was like, I'll take 50%. <laughs> I put it all in a retirement scheme. And I shopped out that 50%. Yeah. And Sarah, I couldn't tell you what, what I bought. bought. Yeah. yeah. So I get the temptation. The truth is the best thing I, should, I could have done at that point was just to say, close my eyes. I didn't have it this before. This is not my money. It's right not now. my money. Right exactly. Now. And just move it to a retirement scheme. Uh, so I've been guilty of it. And I know better. Right? right. So I get the temptation. So I encourage our listeners and our viewers to, if you're in that position and you have the, um, the, the opportunity, you could yeah. actually take it as a cash refund. Try and not do that. Really try and just kind of keep it moving right. and port it to your, next, your new employer or a retirement scheme provider. Okay, yeah. Sanyo, I want you to just get real, real, real now. And I want you to talk to the 20 year olds, the 30 year olds, the 40 year olds even. Because mm -hmm. a lot of us don't have pension in the forefront of our yeah. minds. We just don't. Or we have an amount that's been taken out by our employees right. and we, we think it's enough. But when they don't even know what that figure is going to be mm -hmm. when it is that they truly retire. I want you to give them a word of encouragement about how to make the next steps now, about making a pension plan that makes sense. Right. So as someone who has had to, you know, I've, um, I've become more disciplined over time. You know, it doesn't, have, it doesn't come to me naturally to save mm -hmm. at all. As I said before in another um, podcast, in another interview forum, um, my husband says, I behave like a budget is a bad word. <laughs> and that, I, I mean, when he comes to me about I'm just like, I don't want to hear that. So the reality is that um, I know it's hard, mm -hmm. but the truth is that time will pass. And I think what Carleen said is so important, and she, she said it more than once, is the discipline of saving mm -hmm. and just getting into the habit of doing it and finding a way to save where you don't have to think about it. So those, um, Carleen, I'm like bank deductions, automated, kind of automated deductions, salary right. deductions, contributing as much as you can, up to the maximum 20% allowance in your employer plan or whatever you're allowed to in your employer plan, um, and finding ways to kind of set it and forget it. I think mm -hmm. it's a very important part of it. Mm -hmm. um, because you will hit 55, 60, I mean, before you can even think about it, you'll get there, oh, right? Yes. Yeah. And one of the things as well is because we don't really know what life will hold, mm -hmm. you may not have a smooth time in retirement. You may, get to, you may have to retire even earlier than anticipated. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people who, all of us have friends and family who had life events, you know, health issues that they had to stop working at 40, 45. And so you need to ensure that there's something there because you don't want the guilt and stress of having to rely on others. So a big part of it is the discipline of savings. I think I set it and forget it is a, is a good way. So just elect with your employer to contribute the maximum and it just, just, it just gets taken out of your yeah. paycheck and you don't have to think about and it. And you live within your means after that? Live within your means, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a, lot of, a big part of it is actually visualizing it and knowing, you know, yeah. everybody talking about this soft life and right. good life, but 
after retirement, that's a whole different gear. That's right. a new gear of wanting to travel and explore I love new the things. Fact that you said that because <laughs> we tend to. I think we need to stop thinking about retiring and thinking about kind of refiring, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a different. It's a different chapter. It's yeah. your third chapter. Your second chapter. It's not about knitting on a veranda somewhere with three cats. Yeah, yeah, no. Come on. It's, <laughs> it's, it's rappelling off Table Mountain. It's yes. shark cage diving. It's doing fun things, you know. Yeah. And so. It, that's important, but also that financial security while you are working allows you to be able to do some of those things because we tend to think that life, we can only get to those things when we retire. Mm -hmm. That's also a false narrative that if we properly save while we're working, we can, if we get proper advice and guidance, mm -hmm. find ways in which we can enjoy life while we're working as well, yeah. you know, so it doesn't have to kind of be a, you know, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. A rigid kind of approach to life. We can it can be quite fluid. But I agree with you. We tend to think retirement is oh, granny with her grey hair in a rocking chair. No, you know, yeah. it's a it's a third chapter or a second chapter. Right. Mrs. Mullins told us eighteen. You can start from as early as eighteen. Do you have an ideal time? For persons to start yes as soon as you start formal work so if that's yes. 18 for some of us um we're still in going to school right so something. it's really if you're i would say as soon as you start formal work so if that's 21 or 23 then that's fine too but from day one as soon as you start formal work you have to have a salary to put towards a pension no then? you don't have to have a formal salary mm -hmm. in terms of a salary from an employer right. so you self-employed individuals can contribute to retirement schemes um, and in fact, a lot of people don't realize that as a self-employed worker, you should be contributing to the NIS as well. Because yeah. remember, that's the social security system we have in Jamaica. Yeah. And that's our first pillar of pension savings and retirement security. Mm -hmm. So um, there's an NIS that you have to contribute under law. And then optionally, you can contribute to a retirement scheme. But a lot of people think it's tied to your employer. It doesn't have to be tied to your employer. Mm -hmm. So as a self-employed worker, you have your little business, you're doing your thing, contribute to a retirement scheme. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Mrs. Mullins, before we wrap up, because we're already, we, we're sold. Sanya sold us <laughs> on, on the pension plan. Just pull it all together. You know, how we're going to move forward from here. Because I love practical steps. I want to know tomorrow, mm -hmm. I'm going to come down to FHC, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. You know, just make it real. In, you know, bite-sized amount, how persons are going to move forward, either being brand new right. or already a part of our FHC family. Right. So I think, as I said before, the first step is making that commitment, mm -hmm. you know, just making the commitment that you are going to get into investing. Um, investing is what is going to increase the value of your money, um, your income, the, whatever from your business, however, whatever your income stream is, you want your money to effectively work for you. Once you've made that commitment, then of course you want to establish your broker account with FHC Investments, mm -hmm. and our team of investment advisors will be happy to guide you through the other steps. You can access us um, through any of the FHC branches island-wide. Um, FHC Investments is located in New Kingston, 20 Dominica Drive, but you can actually get information on our products and services through our branches. Mm -hmm. And you can also access us via our website, www.fhcinvestments.com. And there's a plethora of information available there. There are also the account opening forms and guidance on how you can go about setting up any of your investment accounts. So whether it's stocks you're interested in, bonds, pension, um, if you have no idea what you're interested in, still um, make contact with us and we will help you to figure it out. Wonderful. Know. And Sanya, how do people contact the PIAJ for support? Because I know everybody's brains is ticking now and we want to know more questions and have answers. How can persons reach out to you guys? We're at, um, at Jamaica Pensions on all the social, um, social media platforms and PIAJ.org is our website. And yeah, we have a lot of information on our website as well. Um, okay. And then our social media platforms are pretty... Um, current and regularly updated. Wonderful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a session ram packed with information. I want to reinforce some of the key takeaways. Start planning for retirement early by establishing a pension account once you start working, right, Sanyo? Right. 
And if your organization does not contribute to one on your behalf, you need to go out and seek one, right? And you need to see what the terms as well mm -hmm. of the contribution that's being made. Right. Aim to contribute a maximum of 20%. Establish an investment account to supplement your daily living as mm -hmm. well as your pension when you get to retirement age. You can start small, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. with your investments and build your way up. I'm going to add you can even start safe and navigate your way through with your yes. investment advisor. Mm -hmm. Stocks are easily accessible and it's a good option for new investors. To connect with an investment advisor, WhatsApp invest, I-N-V-E-S-T, to 876-564-9485 or call 876-908-1502. And we'll put that information in our chat. You can also email fhcinvestments at fhccu.com. Please follow FHC Investments on all our social media platforms at FHC Investments to keep updated on all the latest opportunities. Thank you guys very much. But I think I have one last thing. I think we have a giveaway question because you know we love niceness over here. <laughs> and it's an easy, easy, easy one, ladies and gentlemen. And this one is for the first person who can put this in the chat. What is the minimum amount to start your pension account? Now, by now, the answer should be in there, and one of our persons from FAC is going to contact you, and we'll be able to give you um, our gifts from our giveaway question. So we want to thank our viewers for tuning in to FHC Investments Fireside Chat Webinar Series. I want to encourage you to look out for other episodes in this series, and as you know, at FHC Investments, we care for you and your investments. Good night. <laughs>